Vince Mimoli Podcast. My name is Vince Mimoli, the host, and I'm here with Angelo Manueli. Today is his birthday. Uh, if you don't know, he's my dad. Uh, the last time like we did one of these together was like five years ago. Like no the, way. The A and B show. I like a new studio. Thank you. You even have a pool view. Yeah. It's a resort. It's a nice like how you set it all up. Yeah. So before we start, we got this award that I totally just got called the World's Greatest Dad Award, which you can have. It's going to be seated in front of you. Oh, for thank your, you. During the podcast. Okay. So we can start. Uh, since we have guests coming over, we're going to try to keep this kind of short. So if to the audience that doesn't know you, can you give a brief introduction to yourself? Oh, boy. <laughs> and describe yourself briefly. <laughs> briefly? Yeah. Uh, I, I, dude, <laughs> I didn't know you were going to ask me that. <laughs> He's a cool pilot, dude. No, <laughs> I don't like talking about myself. I have a beautiful wife and eight children, anywhere between all the way down from 21 down to two years old and have a granddaughter on the way. Uh, I don't know what else you want to know about me. <laughs> okay, great. And uh, you're a pilot and a business owner. Yeah, my pilot was is, is fun. Got to fly today for my I birthday. Thought, how was the birthday flight? It was awesome. Five five twenty five this morning, I got a uh, Flights for Life alert and that changed my plans. I was just going to fly over to the house, and, uh, but we got to uh, bring some blood to Flagstaff, which is normally, if, if I didn't fly it, they would have to drive it up there, and it'd probably be like a three-hour drive, wow. but we did it in 40 minutes, dropped it off, saved probably a life, and came back, so it was fun. I got to fly over the house, which... Flew right over the house. Yours was a video. So That's I'm hoping this video comes out better than how you videoed me flying this over the house. This will come good as long as this time I'm not zoomed in all the way and you can't see anything. All right, well. Okay, so something cool about you, I think, was it in high school where you were voted most shy? Junior high, and I don't think that was cool. And now the whole world knows that. <laughs> not cool. <laughs> That's not cool. You know, you know. Junior high, I was voted how most shy. How am I to tie it in? Okay. Oh, oh, okay. So you were voted most shy. You grew up in like a small town, right? And... So like, what made you so shy? Like, you didn't want to, you didn't like meet new people. You help, help hung out with the same. I, I don't know. Maybe it was just how I was brought up. I just was always uh, insecure, and you know. But I was I was known. I think that's that's what I how I kept myself uh, going and not eat a bullet because <laughs> uh, I'm like, hey, I'm the most popular shy guy. At least they <laughs> gave me an award. You can Nowadays, they won't. They can't even do that. That's like bullying. Right? That's, That's bullying, Especially right? if the school does it. Yeah. So now that it feels like you can talk to like pretty much any person, do you feel like that? That, but the, but the camera. But, but the this camera. podcast. I could talk to anybody. At you're not looking at the camera. You're looking straight. All right. But since you feel like you can... Or like at least I feel like yeah like any person you can have a conversation with for like hours. Uh, do you feel like there was like a switch that happened, or like did you have to train yourself to not be to be able to talk to anyone? Or? Um, yeah, I had to uh, reprogram myself. So I knew I was going to be in business. In fact, my first interview in this in in the uh, field that I got into for about twenty years, um, I remember the guy told me two things that I'm going to make about a hundred thousand dollars a year. Now back then. The minimum wage was like five bucks an hour. So, you know, if you're making a hundred thousand a year, that's like even today, that's still a lot of money. So I'm like, yeah, right. But I remember that. And then he says, you're gonna be. I said, so what do I do for a hundred thousand dollars a year? And he said, you're gonna be speaking in front of groups of people. <laughs> and, I, and I left that interview and I said, there's no way. I mean, I'm not gonna talk in front of people. But then I said, well, for a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, people. Uh, might want to listen to me and but it wasn't a business it was a business where I had to develop from ground up so it was the potential of making that which uh, but I wanted that more than being shy so I, I started reprogramming myself and just being around people that would influence me and encourage me and um, listen to <clears throat> we had um, cassette tapes back then so we would listen to s cassettes and just kind of basically brainwashing myself to being able to be more confident mm -hmm. and you still have to 
be able to do stuff like that, right? Because you're in sales. So what do you do now? Yeah, well, I have an insurance brokerage business. So, insurance. but yeah, so the thing is that, you know, if if you're going to be in business, you have to be able to talk to people and and connect with people and. Um, you know, you're going to be meeting people from all walks of life, so you're going to need to know how to relate to them. So you can't, like, for me, if, if I if I meet a pilot, obviously I can relate to them because I'm a I, I'm also a pilot, right? Mm-hmm. If I do, if I meet somebody who's an insurance, I can talk to them about that. But but it doesn't have to be those two things. It could be anything, mm-hmm. um, because I just I'm I'm totally I'm really interested in people, and I think that's the key is, you know, people will think you're a genius if you get them to talk about themselves. And I learned that a long time ago. You don't even have to say anything. Just ask them questions about themselves, and they'll think you're the nicest person on the planet. Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah. So we said how you, like, when you were growing up, you were uh, shy, which is not a cool thing. I found out. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it's, it, it, it's better than if I wasn't. Because, if it, you know, a lot of times when I saw people that weren't shy, and they told me they were shy, or, they, or they, they're like outspoken, and they're doing these meetings. They said, "Oh yeah, I used to be shy and everything like that." Um, I never believed them, you know. Or people that go, "Well, I never had a problem talking in front of people." Um, well, I couldn't relate to that, and I think more people relate to me, uh, especially when I have an award, not the greatest. What is it? World's greatest dad award. I had most shy, you know. So these people that said they were shy. At least they didn't have an award. I have an award <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> and I, I'm hoping that it, uh, that God is using me to influence people to say, "Wait a minute! If He can do it, then I can do it." You know, that's true. And so then, going back to growing up, a uh, fun question. I don't think I've asked you before. What are some dreams or goals that you had as a kid or even a young adult that you've accomplished? Oh, I. I let me see. So I always wanted to own my own business. You know, my so, my um, emails even own biz. My my father oh, yeah. raised me. He says never work for anybody. Uh, so I've accomplished that a few times, and always wanted to be a pilot. That was something. Yeah, yeah that's something that uh, I was born two days before Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. Uh, I wanted to be an astronaut, which I didn't accomplish that. But um, um, and I wanted to have a family. I wanted to be married and have a family that's actually probably number one but you're not thinking that when you're eight right uh, yeah. you're thinking that as you're older but uh, just those are like the top three I guess so now are there any that you haven't that you still want to like anything uh, else you see yourself wanting to do wanting to do let me see I, I can't do these those kinds of questions like I, I just like <laughs> like I don't know I, I'm always doing something but I'm trying to think of uh I just I just like influencing people and and just influencing more and more people. But I don't have any particular goal right now that I'm shooting for. Uh, that uh, not to say I've achieved everything, but uh, nothing like mo- monumental that I'm thinking like, hey, I need to achieve this thing. You know. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, then, oh, going back also again to growing up, you're Italian, right? Sicilian. <laughs> Okay, what are some things that you heard growing up that are like embedded in your head or maybe like funny moments or like actual things like you heard around the house like a lot from like your parents or anything? Besides swears or? <laughs> Preferably <laughs> not. Unless it's I Italian. probably would, would yeah. swear in Italian. Um, things in Italian? I mean, I, I think the, the thing would, would be in... Well, or it doesn't have uh, to be Italian, just something like you'd see in an Italian house like you wouldn't see nowadays in like a house. Well, you kind of could hear it right now. There's a lot of loud noise, a lot of... Uh, what you hear in the background. In the background. Yeah. You know, uh, family. Family is huge. Family, loyalty, you know, people are sticking together. Um, that's that's something like we had meals together, uh, and, that, and that's something I, I, I do now. I, I think it's very important that your family, such your immediate family, have meals together. Uh, another thing we did is we, when we had parties, we all sat in on the same like table so we even if it's in a different room the, the tables have to connect you know uh the kids sat in their own table but the adults all had to be like on that table and we were served like family style and then as we got older we started doing this uh buffet style but we didn't have that growing up and whatnot so then what are some things that you learned growing up that you want to teach your kids or maybe you have taught us already uh 
Well, love God, you know, uh, seek Him all the time in anything you do, and be honest, have loyalty, um, respectful, right? These those qualities, uh, you know, um, work hard. You know, I know sometimes now people say you, know, you work hard, work smart, uh, but they use that excuse to say, well, I'm working smart, but they're not really probably working hard either. Um, own your own business. I, uh, you know, I'm not saying that that's the only way you could be successful because you could be mm -hmm. successful in anything. But having that freedom, having a way to control your own destiny, um, when you have, especially, you know, in the last, I would say, at least 20 years, the, the workplace has changed. It's not somewhere you can go to a job and stay there for 40 years and retire and get a gold watch. Nowadays, it's um, you're, you're expendable. They can get rid of you. And the only way you can really control your own destiny is if you had your own business and you put forth effort. So in saying that, you're my son. What are some things that I've told you? Or he just flipped it. Yeah, see, because that's he, what he does. Yeah, I, I, I'm having a really tough time with this because I, <laughs> I don't like being interviewed. I like interviewing people. So if you ask me a question, I already have like 15 questions to ask you. But you would be perfect to tell people as a as a perfect example of somebody you just turned 16. By the way, <laughs> happy birthday! And you know I'm super proud of you, right? Okay. Uh, even this kind of stuff and in your new studio. In the resort here, right? <laughs> um, so something you, I, you yeah. Said, like, what did you learn from me so far? Um, there's like a million things. I've actually written down a lot of things. I like one day I'll make a book. I don't know if I want to wait until like. No, do it now. Like, do it now. Wait to, or wait till I'm dead, and then then it's it, you can sell more copies, right? Is that how it works? <laughs> no, no. But um, there's a lot. I think like number one is like. Obviously, like really simple, like never giving up, persevere, like, perseverance. But like the amount of times, like I've heard it from you, and it's like embedded in my head that like sometimes even in the littlest things, when I felt like giving up anything, I just hear your voice in my head, like telling me. And like sometimes in the lectures, it, I don't like it feels <laughs> like I don't know like I'm, lectures aren't they coaching sessions? <laughs> I don't consider them that until later, until I look right. back on it. Or until a lot of things that you taught me that I actually adapt them. And then, like, a lot of times I actually, like, see yourself in me. Like, when I do something, like, good or something. And I think, like, that's something that you taught me. And then, then I realize that. And I hope you see yourself in, you know, uh, when I do something bad. When you do something bad and you say, well, my dad does that no, too. And I don't like, like that. So I'm going to stop. No, like, I yeah. do something good. Like, sometimes I'll teach the younger kids something useful. And then I'll, like, think you taught me that. And it's actually helped me. Cool. So, well, so thanks, buddy. But yeah, so then to close this out, we can end with um, what's a good closing question? I, I would probably do something like, "Who's your favorite kid?" I had and that then, written down. I know. I had favorite kid, <laughs> and I didn't know. I didn't know any of this stuff. Like you just totally. <laughs> you didn't know anything. Usually we have the A and V show, and we're just like bantering back and forth. This <laughs> seems just more serious because we're in this resort uh, <laughs> here, and I just want to be more professional, but. I know you, buddy. I wrote that down. <laughs> Favorite kid? Question mark. LOL. That's what I wrote. Yeah. Do you have one? Of course. Me? Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I probably know. You can't tell anybody, or else I'll deny it. Okay, but it's on. Oh no! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, bro. Crap. Well, thank you for watching. I'm gonna link. Can this. I say crap on? Uh... Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for watching. I'm gonna link his channel down below. He does cool flying videos, and I think he has more subscribers than me now. So do I? I well, you so. helped me with ninety percent of them. Yeah. But... Yeah. He's my guy. He's my wingman. <laughs> All right. So uh, everyone, go uh, subscribe to him. Uh, best dad in the world, and happy fifty-second birthday. Thanks, buddy. Thank Love you for watching, everyone. Like, share, subscribe, and stay happy. Love you, buddy.